What's up, everyone? Welcome to Sunday Sessions, episode number five. From my home, mi casa es su casa. Welcome to my living room. Super grateful to be here, excited to provide a ton of value. This is a live Q&A where I answer your questions on the spot. The pressure's on, but I love it. I love interacting with all of you. I love some of the great questions I get on a regular basis. Uh, they really get my mind thinking and moving, and it keeps me on my toes. So I'm super grateful for each and every one of you joining here. Um, if you're just joining, please put where you're from in the comments. I'd like to know where you're from. I'm in northern New Jersey. We got six inches of snow outside today. So right now in the background, you could probably hear I got some neighborhood kids shoveling my driveway. So they're out there shoveling away, making some money. Side hustle professionals right now, the neighborhood kids. I remember being a little kid and going door to door when it snowed out and asking the, the neighbors, hey, I'll shovel your driveway for 25 bucks. I'll shovel your driveway for 35 bucks. And I was able to grow my initial, you know, hustle money early on at a young age doing that. So I'm super grateful to have all of you here. Let's get the questions to flow in. About halfway through this, I'm going to show for a lot of, I, we get a lot of newcomers and newbies to Amazon watching our lives. And so something I wanna show you is the power of, on a cell phone, the power of the Amazon Sellers app and how you can use it. All it is is 39 a month for a professional seller print on amazon.com. And then you can use the seller app, which I'll show you in a couple minutes here. You can use the seller app to start scanning products at your local grocery stores, Walmarts, TJ Maxx's, Marshalls, and actually start making money right from your cell phone today, my friend. Let's see if we got any questions in here. Best place to source in bulk would be to reach out to wholesalers and distributors. They're gonna have the bulk deals. They're gonna have the bulk offers that are gonna allow you to grow your wholesale Amazon business. And it's very simple. You could do a Google search. We also have a great YouTube video that's right here. You could check that out on how to source profitable wholesale distributors. And I love Love that you're thinking how to source bulk, right? Because that was the light bulb that went off in our head six years ago when we were doing retail arbitrage every single day and we just couldn't get past a certain amount of sales plus the amount of time it was taking to source these products, go into Costco, go into Walmart, go into BJ's, go into Sam's Club and purchase them, research them on the spot. And six years ago, you guys, this is gonna blow your mind right now, but six years ago, there was no Amazon sellers app. There were no Scout IQ. There was none of these additional add-ons that we could use while sourcing these products. We were literally going into these places with a notepad and a pen just writing down ASINs on these papers and bringing them back to our computer at our, at our warehouse and researching them and then going back the next day and buying them. So it was just a completely different time. So all of you should be really grateful that you have access to all of these wonderful websites and assets and Chrome extensions because they didn't exist for us six years ago, but we were still able to build a very successful business. And I promise you now is a better time than ever to start selling on Amazon if you aren't already. I know a lot of you are already, so kudos to you for taking action. The purpose of these live Q and A's and just kind of this hangout Sunday session is to just keep pro providing tons of value to you. So it encourages you to think outside of the box and expand your brain, expand your mind and your thought process so you can take your business to the next level, whether that's four figures to five figures or five to six, six to seven, even seven to eight. And right now we're in the process of helping our first seller go from eight figures to nine figures, over a hundred million dollars. So that's super exciting for us. And I'm super excited to be here. What's good, bro? I'm from Cali. We got nothing but sun. So that was the question. That was just a, a, a shameless brag. So we got Manny over here just bragging about how it's it's sunny in sunny in uh, California when in Texas literally people's pipes are freezing. Uh, they have no access to electricity. In, in in New Jersey we got six inches of snow. Our business was shut down for the day. But Manny's chilling in the sunshine, my friend. Uh, I saw a video. And this isn't to downplay what's happening in Texas right now. I also like to stay up to date what's happening in these live Sunday sessions. Um, and what's happening in Texas right now with the governor and and the restrictions on their power grids. It's truly terrible. It, it really is. You know, there's literally my girlfriend lives in Houston, Texas, and you know, she hasn't had electricity in two and a half days, no running water. 
Um, there's people on ventilators and nursing homes that are having trouble getting access to power and electricity. And it's very, it's a very tragic time. And, and I just saw, I don't know if it's true. I'm just pu putting what I saw out there. You can do your own research, but I just saw Senator Ted, uh, I forgot his last name, but the Senator of Texas is actually on a flight to Cancun right now. So that just blows my mind. Uh, you know, people in his communities are literally suffering and they have no access. There's, there's one gal at limits at the local grocery stores and ho homeboys literally flying to a tropical country, which just blows my mind. But that's a side note, side note to the side note. We're gonna get back to selling on Amazon. So Manny's out there in the sun. Uh, we got a foot of snow, he's got a foot of sun. How to find a good wholesale from millions of them on the internet. So you gotta do your research, you gotta call a lot of them. The way we really vet wholesale suppliers on our end and the way you should be vetting wholesale suppliers is through that interaction with them. Once you start communicating with them and you open up the line of communication, you start asking questions like, hey, what are your MOQs? You know, do you pay for shipping? Do I pay for shipping? Do you have inventory limits? Do you have restrictions on certain brands. Once you start asking those questions and they're answering them clearly, then that will really give you an idea of if they're the company that's going to help you grow your business. And also what plays a huge role in that is pricing. You want to make sure their pricing is competitive enough for you to purchase their products and then relist them on Amazon. So buy low, sell high said he has no questions either, but he just wants to say that he appreciates everything we do. And he looks forward to when we can do meetups again. I do too, my friend. I do too. He's in New Hampshire and he came down to New York. That warms my heart, man. You know, I can't wait until we're able to do meetups again in person. And, and I, I love it. I love, I love flying around the country and meeting all of you and, and shaking your hands and getting to know about your families and your, and your business model and your growth opportunities, because that's really, that's the driving force behind all of these lives I do and all the question answering is because I truly care. I care about the success of other people because I know what it's like to have absolutely nothing. You know, just seven years ago, I had absolutely nothing. I was a shell of a man broken. So I know what it feels like to turn my life around and I want everybody out there to know that it's available to you you can literally have it right now right now not like yesterday not like last week not like in two weeks right now right now you can have it it's accessible to you so I'm super excited to be here let's slide into some questions here uh, best repricer don't want one that just races to the bottom of course nobody does Hoping for one that looks at several different aspects before lowering the price, etc. Yes, so um, the repricer I would suggest is a repricer called Go Aura. Um, it's definitely a repricer we've used in the past. We've since built our own, but we've used it. A lot of our members of our program use it. They love it. It's, it's great because it's not just driving prices to the bottom. It's analyzing competitive sellers and it's analyzing in-stock inventory. So it's, it's, it would be considered an algorithmic repricer and a rules-based repricer. It's like 50-50. But what you don't want to do is get a strictly rules-based repricer. A rules-based repricer is a repricer that operates on if and then statements. So if there's four prime sellers, then my price goes down 25 cents. If Amazon's on the listing, my pr then my price goes up a dollar. So if and then statements are rules-based pricers where you set rules to govern your price pricing. Those repricers that are strictly rule-based are repricers you want to stay away from. You want to get a rules-based and algorithmic repricer. An algorithmic repricer is analyzing the spectrum of the listing. So it's looking at the sellers, it's looking at their reviews, it's looking at in-stock inventory, it's looking at their fulfillment channels, and it's analyzing all that information and pricing your products accordingly. What you think about buy wholesale lists? Um, wholesale lists. So I, I don't, listen, the way I see it, and we get this question a lot, I get it all the time, like, hey, Eric, if I join your training program, will you give me distributors? And it's like, no, I'm not gonna give you distributors. And think about it, if someone's trying to sell you a list of distributors, how good could those distributors really be? Are you gonna ask them how many other 
Amazon sellers they sold that list to? Because let's say they sold it to 300 people and only 30% of them actually contact those companies. That means you got a hundred new Amazon sellers that are dealing with those wholesalers on that list that you're gonna be competing with. Now let's say 50% of those hundred all buy the same product. Now you got 50 people on a listing. So I don't agree, I would never sell wholesale lists on my end and if someone's trying to sell you a wholesale list, I'd say do the work yourself, stay away from it. Don't, don't go buying wholesale lists. I've never gotten any value out of any distributor that someone's tried to sell me. You know, I've gotten access to some wholesale lists that other Amazon sellers have, have purchased for five, six, seven hundred dollars. And then I was like, listen, share it with me and I'm gonna look and see if you got robbed here. And lo and behold, they got hustled out of 600 bucks because they bought a cheap, trashy wholesale list with companies, wholesalers that I know personally and I know their product selection is just trash. And the other wholesalers on the list are trash as well. So it's like, do not buy wholesale lists. Why do wholesalers allow us to sell? What is the benefit for them? They can have the sales themselves and can get better profit. Please answer. Yeah, so listen, at the end of the day, if you're operating an Amazon business like I am or a lot of you who are watching this are, you understand that selling on Amazon is not just you wake up one day and you're like, okay, I'm gonna sell this roll of tape and I'm gonna make a lot of money on it. There's processes in place. There's packaging the items, shipping them to Amazon, understanding your profits, understanding the Amazon fees, the pick and pack fees, the referral fees, the storage fees. There's understanding all that information. So for a strictly wholesale company who literally is selling either pallets or truckload of inventory at a time, to switch their entire business model to an Amazon FBA business model, it takes a lot of work. And I not only have the benefit of operating a very large Amazon business, but I also operate a large wholesale company. So I understand the subtle nuances of both businesses. Now for me, it's much easier for me personally to make money selling wholesale to other brick and mortar stores, bodegas, Amazon sellers, because literally I get a $10,000 order in, all I do is I go downstairs, pick the order, put it on a pallet, wrap it, ship it to the company, boom, made a thousand bucks in literally 20 minutes, right? But the thing is, it's just not as scalable as an Amazon business is. It's scalable, but it's not gonna scale as fast as an Amazon business. So to go back to your original question, the reason why wholesalers and distributors aren't listing the products they sell on Amazon and they're reaching out to people like you or you're reaching out to people like them to sell their products is because they just don't have the systems in place. It's a lot of work to grow an Amazon business. Um, how to calculate accurate storage fees. So that's a great question. There's actually a, if you just type storage fees in the top right of Amazon in the search bar, it will pull up. So I got it right here, I'll go over it briefly. Uh, but the storage fees are pretty straightforward. So January through September, it's 75 cents per cubic foot for a standard size item. And then October to December, it almost increases 4X and it's $2.40 for a standard item. So it's very simple to get the cubic dimensions of your product. You'd simply multiply length times width times height to get the volume of that product. And then you would divide the volume by 12 cubic inches, which is 1728, because there's 1728 cubic inches in a cubic foot. So you would divide it by that, and then you would actually get the amount of cubic space that that product takes up. And then you would multiply that by 0.75, and that would be your monthly storage fee for that product. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm actually going to, let me just copy this link. That link below will be right at the bottom of this video. All right, next question here. What do we got here? Best trade shows attend, uh, Expo East, Expo West, and um, what's the other one? ASD. And actually, I don't know if anybody's registered for the ASD, but they're doing a countrywide tour starting in about a month or two where they're going to four or five different cities. So it could be a city by you. So I would encourage you to check out asdonline.com 
check their website out, they might be coming right to your neck of the woods. So I would leverage that, those relationships that you could build there in person. Huge opportunities. Does location make a big difference when it comes to companies wanting to work with you? Yes, it does. Uh, so something you want to ask them, and this is where location comes in, and this is the reason why. So we're on the East Coast. We're in New Jersey. We don't do a lot of business with wholesalers on the California side, on the, on the West Coast. And the reason why is because there's really no amount of order size unless you're getting a full truckload and even then getting a full truckload from California to New Jersey is pretty expensive or from Washington to Florida pretty expensive so most of the time leveraging those relationships just isn't profitable because of the cost of shipping whether you have to pay for it yourself or the company's going to pay for it they may not even want to ship it to you if that's their deal hey if you could purchase ten thousand dollars or in orders MOQ of $10,000, minimum order quantity, we'll pay for shipping. But then they find out in your New Jersey, and then they might even add a couple pennies per, per item that they're sending you to, to equal out the cost of shipping that they're going to have to cover. So I would encourage you first, start off in your immediate area. If you're in a city, like let's say you live in Indianapolis, start doing an actually an Indianapolis search and start there and then branch off to maybe Indiana and then branch off to the Midwest and then branch off to a nationwide search. So you definitely have a lot of opportunity there. How much do you recommend for a new seller with no prior experience to spend on product in the beginning? So for a new seller, I honestly recommend going to retail stores. And I'm actually, this is a great segue to what I'm going to show you here. So for a new seller, I'd recommend going to retail stores and starting with 200 bucks and literally buying, you know, 10, 15 products. And I'll show you literally right now on this live on how to do this, right? So there's something called the Amazon Seller App. It's right here. Not only does it track all your sales for the month, but also in this top right corner right here, it has a little camera. So if you click that little camera, this, this thing pops up where you can actually scan barcodes, right? So you would take this and let's say we got this Bertoli. Let's say you found this Bertoli um, at your local grocery store and you wanted to look it up. You'd scan the Bertoli. Come on with it. Come on. Come on. There we go. So we scan the Bertoli, right? And now you see all these Bertoli listings. You can see there, it's probably backwards. Is it backwards? It's going to be backwards. So what I'm going to do is post screenshots of it. But you can see the rank here. And then you can see the price that it's selling at. So this is all great information for you. So if I just scroll on this page here, looks like the first one I got is a six pack. And we're just going to, I'm just going to throw a number out here. Let's say you're paying uh, 150 per bottle for this, right? $1.50 at the store. Let's just say hypothetically from the store, right? So you can literally start scrolling. You got a six pack, this first option that's selling for 26.85 and it's ranked 60,000, right? So um, 150 times six is what, nine bucks? But well, you click on this next page and then you would literally click this option here where it says gross proceeds and it brings you to this other page and then you put your buy cost in. So $9 for the three, for the six pack. And then it will calculate, it's saying that, oh no, Amazon fulfilled. So $9, it's saying you're left with $7.26. So there's so much opportunity to crush it with this product. Now keep in mind, this product is an aerosol. So it'll probably be considered a hazmat, but that doesn't mean you can't do it seller fulfilled. At the top here, there's another option that says seller fulfilled. So you could click seller fulfilled and you could add your shipping to the customer. So let's say it cost me, I'll just say 775 because it's going to be over a pound. It's going to be about 775. So now even with the cost of shipping of 775 to a customer, you can see right here that I'm still left with six dollars and seven cents. So I can literally purchase this product if I'm getting it for a dollar fifty, even two bucks, I'm still making four dollars. And this is a product that you just happen to find at your local grocery store. You scan it with your Amazon seller app by clicking the little camera up here and it gives you all the information. It's literally game changing. It's how we started growing our business in year two when the seller app came out. For the first couple of years, like I was saying before, we were literally using notepads and doing that, writing products down and analyzing them back at a computer. 
but there's a huge opportunity. So what I would encourage anybody to do is just getting started. Download the Sellers app. All you have to do is pay the $39.99 a month to have access to a professional seller account. You could do it with an individual plan, but I encourage nobody to get an individual seller's a plan. You want it, you want the professional $39.99 a month. You get access to this seller app, and then you can just click this camera in the top right corner and start scanning products. It's game changer. I heard wholesalers don't like Amazon sellers. How to approach a wholesaler. Do you need own e-commerce store in order to get a foot with wholesale? So listen, at the end of the day, yes, some wholesalers do not like Amazon sellers. Also, there's other wholesalers that love Amazon sellers. So it really depends what wholesalers you're talking about. Amazon has become a staple in the direct to consumer product industry, right? Where everyday consumable products like this, for example, Bertoli, um, other food products, grocery products, health and beauty products, Amazon has become a huge distribution channel for these products. And these wholesalers recognize that. You know, we're placing some orders we place with some of our wholesalers, 50, 60, $70,000 bi-weekly. That's crazy, you know? So what, what I encourage you to do, if, if a wholesaler is hesitant to open your account up because you're an Amazon seller, communicate them. Ask them, hey, I understand you're hesitant. You know, do you have certain brands that we're restricted to sell? Do you have any map? pricing policies, minimum advertised pricing policies that we need to follow? Because I'm a man of my word. And I'd be happy to sign some sort of agreement, even if that's on the table, stating that I will abide by those map pricing policies and that I will not list the brands that I'm not allowed to sell on Amazon on Amazon. Because I truly believe that if you allow us to open this wholesale account, we'll be able to grow your sales revenue by X amount in the next six to 12 months. Right. And explain to them the importance of having access to 150 million prime members. Talk to them about the value you're going to provide them. This is what I see because like I said before, I am a wholesaler. So I get these emails all the time. They're very amateur. I'll put it that way. They're very no vice. Right. It will just be one sentence. Hey, send me an Am send me a catalog. I'm an Amazon seller. It's like, no, 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 no. Tell me about yourself. What is your company doing? How are you going to provide value, right? Give them some information about what type of categories you sell in. Talk about how fast you can place orders, how quick you can turn inventory, how you're going to grow their business. Provide them value before you just want to take, 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 take. Most relationships in life are take, give, take, give, and then gain, right? You don't just take, take, take. You got to take and give, take and give, give and take, give and take. Switch it up. I'm telling you, my friends. That's how you grow a business, and that's how you open tons of wholesale accounts. Thoughts on Helium 10? I think it's a great software. I was actually just using it the other day. It's great for private label, great for analyzing products. Repricers are intimidating when they work against you. Yeah, no. You know, the. I think it's... I think it really eliminates the intimidating factor when you think about the value that they provide, knowing that I can literally go to sleep tonight and in the middle of the night, my price is changing to try to win the buy box. It's changing. It's just switching it up. It's changing. Every 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it's changing. It's like, what? Sign me up for that shit. I want a piece of that pie because to know that I don't have to constantly go to Seller Central and adjust my price, the amount of sales that you're missing out on when you're not using a, a repricer are literally mind-blowing, my friends, mind-blowing. So many sales you're missing out on by not using a repricer. So the intimidating factor of losing a, a you know, a dropped at a dollar, I should have been making five, now I'm making four. Think about the positive side, how much money that repricer is actually making you. Think about that before you think about the intimidating side of the few dollars it's possibly losing you. I know for sure repricers have made me millions of dollars in the past six years. Millions, literally millions. So I'm, I'm pro repricer. What is your favorite category of products to sell? Is it grocery? Looking for long-term products, what I keep on selling, that will keep selling. Uh, my two favorite categories are grocery and health and beauty. Those are my two favorite categories. I love them. But I also love the other categories, baby, outdoor, sports, um, industrial and scientific, all those categories. I'm not a category discriminator. It's an NJZ over here. No judgment zone. I love all the categories. If I could make a couple bucks on it, sickity sign me up. I want in. I'm in the course and went from 4K to 20K per month in gross sales since I joined. I know it ain't much, but seeing the growth, thank you. That's amazing, Amazon with Brian, man. That just warms my heart, seriously. That's why we created this. That's why we created our training, because 
it works without fail. You know, you're one of literally dozens of sellers. You grew your business just from starting from 4,000 a month to 20,000 a month. That is a 5x growth in a couple months. Shit like that just doesn't happen anywhere else. Tell me a business where you can literally join some sort of training program and in three months you could grow your business 5x. It just doesn't exist, but it exists right here. We created it. So thank you so much for sharing that with me, Brian. That's why I do what we do. How do you approach the wholesaler when you're a new seller? So it's about perception, my friend. It's all about perception, right? So the way you want to word things is slightly different, right? You don't want to say, hey, uh, you know, I'm an Amazon seller and I'd like to create it an account with you. You want to say we, right? So it it appears you have a large team, you know, like my team and I are interested in creating an account with you. So that instantly, right away, right off the rip, the person on the other end of that email isn't thinking like, all right, this one guy with this tiny little operation out of his living room. No, no, he's thinking your team, right? So instantly it paints this picture in his mind like, all right, if this guy has it or girl has an entire team, then they're probably operating a large business. And instantly that gives the thought, opportunity and opportunity is where it's at so you want to sell yourself a little bit talk about once again i'll touch back on the value what value you're going to bring them how are you going to make them money are you going to enhance some of the listings of the wholesale products you know are you going to run some slight ads on some of their products at no cost to them we did that a lot early on we'd spend 500 dollars a month with a new wholesale company on advertising that we're spending just so we could increase the sales so we could report back and be like listen Last month we ordered 20,000, this month we need 30,000. And next month we're expecting $40,000 in purchase orders. That's because we care. We wanna get your products out of your warehouse. We wanna sell them. We wanna get them in the hands of the end consumer. So ton of value to be had here. Well, everyone, I appreciate your time. This is Sunday Sessions. You can find me here every Sunday, bringing, delivering that heat. Amazon business tips, tricks of the trades from experienced Amazon sellers. You can't find shit like this anywhere else. And if you are finding it, you gotta piece it together. A piece here, a piece there, a piece here, a piece there. But right here, right here, It's all available to you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, check out our other videos, stay grateful, and stay lit.